In this video, we're going to talk about tips for moving out of state and how we can help to avoid the mistakes. I'm Jen Haidt with Keller Williams Beach Cities and I live in El Segundo, California and I've moved a whopping 30 times in the past 20 years. It's crazy. My husband has a job that takes us all over the world. We've moved from Finland. My oldest son was born in Germany. We've lived in Italy. I don't even know how many states, quite a few states. And I'm actually from Toronto, Canada. So I moved around a bit up there as well. So I'm tried and tested. You wanna know the mistakes? I've got them. So I'm here to let you know what not to do. Okay, let's get started with tip number one, and that is to have a parts box. This parts box is going to be your best friend. This box is going to be the last box that gets put onto the moving truck and the first box that comes off of the moving truck. Basically what's going to be in it is screwdrivers, Allen wrenches, tape, a box cutter, scissors, anything that you are going to need to start reassembling the furniture that you took apart. Uh, as long as everything's in there, the screws, you should put your bags of screws together in those boxes as well and label them. So it would be like this bag of screws is for the TV or this bag of screws is for the master bedroom um, and the bed in there. But this is going to be your best friend. And when you open it up, all the things that you are going to need to start reassembling the furniture will be right there and you can get at it right away when the movers are taking all of the stuff off of the truck. All right, here is a mistake to avoid, not packing toilet paper. This is a big thing. So if you wanna have your parts box, you should also have another box, which we'll, we'll call it box number two. And in this box, you're gonna to wanna to have toilet paper. You're gonna to wanna to have paper towels, um, Windex, some cleaning items so that you can wipe down the cabinets or the cupboards when you put, when you're, if you have any food that you're unloading. Um, this is a mainstay. I cannot tell you enough that you are going to need the toilet paper at your new place. So that's a mistake definitely you need to avoid. Okay, tip number two is to plan as far in advance as you possibly can. It is very difficult to nail down a moving company for the weekend or a holiday weekend is almost impossible. And yet that's when most people are moving. So the beginning of the month is quite a difficult time to move back and forth. All the moving companies and you get all of your quotes, uh, then usually you'll be okay. So. Tip number two is planning in advance and do not make the mistake of leaving it to the last minute and certainly don't make the mistake of calling up your buddy the morning of the move and saying, hey, listen, I got a, I got a case of beer here for you. Can you help me move? It may not be the best plan. We have made that mistake before. It didn't go over very well. Tip number three, think about getting some temporary storage. So one of the ones that we like and recommend is pods. So what they do is they bring a big storage unit um, to your place. It's like a big, it looks like a big garbage tin actually. And you load all of your stuff into it. They seal it up. They take it to wherever you're moving to. They'll store it there for you. And then when you do get into your place, just say maybe there's a three week delay and you guys are maybe taking a vacation in the interim or you're having to stay at a hotel. Um, they will hold onto their stuff in the storage and then they'll actually deliver it right to your house. So it's better than renting a storage facility where you have to move all of your stuff from your house to the storage facility and then you have to get the movers to come back and move it from the storage facility to your new place. So pods is a good one. Um, I know that there's other companies that do that, but it is something to look into. Tip number four is making sure all of the utilities are up and running before you move into the house. Uh, the last thing you want is to get there and there be no heat or no running water. Uh, so contact whoever you need to contact in the city that you're moving to. And if you're renting, you're going to need to contact the landlord and make sure you get in touch with whoever you need to talk to to get all the utilities uh, put into your name. Okay, tip number five, this is a big one. Make sure you vet your moving company and make sure you are there for all of the itemization that they do. So we moved from Buffalo, New York to LA and um, the guys totally stole our, our big, huge desktop compu computer. It was horrible. Um, and then they said that it wasn't even on the manifest. So thankfully I had done a walkthrough just with an Instagram story that I randomly was doing um, just to actually show my parents saying like, this is what we've gotten done. Everything's all tidied up. 
and I had the original Mac desktop box that we had bought it in um, and we put it back into the we put the computer back into the box it was all sealed ready to go and on the manifest all that it was put underneath was office supplies so they came back at us and said you know what it wasn't in here you you didn't have a Mac desktop desktop computer, but I was able to show them the video that I had taken and it had their packing tape on it. So we were able to recoup our money, but I can't stress how important it is to vet your moving company. We had vetted them too. It was a great company, but they're, they're just hiring people left, right and center. Um, and it's super busy right now. So, um, you know, it's just so important to go through each item on every list and it takes forever and it's very tedious, but the alternative is maybe missing something in the process. If you can get a video of everything that you have packed up and, and right before it goes on the moving truck, it does come in useful. You can delete it later, but to have that peace of mind, especially if you're moving from state to state, you know, usually that they're gonna keep those those trucks in storage for you know a week until they totally get filled up and then and then they move across country once they have everything all sorted out on their end. So just Make sure you have everything documented and vet your companies. Tip number six, allow for some buffer time. If you are selling a house in one state and moving to another state, um, you know, things can happen. So you may not want to close on your one house at 9 a.m. on the Monday and then figure that you're going to, you know, get the keys to your new house in California at 6 p.m. on the Monday. Uh, the best way to avoid, you know, any stress is to say, we're going to go, we're going to stay in a hotel for a couple days. Um, this gives it just a little bit of buffer room in case something does happen. At least you've planned for something that could be unexpected that comes up. Um, another thing too, is this is another way when the pods comes into play, because if you do have a little bit of time in between when you close on your one house and you get the keys to your new house, the pods will already have your stuff in storage. And tip number seven is to have a yard sale before you move. Don't do it when you get to the new place because you're just gonna have all this junk that you're moving. And if you're planning on getting rid of it anyways, then why are you gonna pay for a moving company to pick it up, box it up and move it, I don't know, however far you're moving across the country. This is a, a great way to alleviate stress as well because you're not gonna have all this stuff to unpack. And if you are planning on getting new furniture, this is a good time to sell it, get rid of it, and then when you get to the new place, uh, you'll be able to find something that fits perfectly into your new home. Also, having a yard sale is a great way to say goodbye to some of the neighbors. So they'll just pop by, maybe it's somebody that you don't see all the time, but when you're having the yard sale, you know, they're gonna make a little bit of effort to come and be like, you're moving, like we wanted to say goodbye. So it is a great way to, you know, say your goodbyes because that becomes super stressful. Um, we know for sure we've moved so many times, goodbyes are so hard, uh, but when you kind of have people coming to you just to, you know, bid their final farewells until we meet again, uh, it, it takes a little bit of the stress out instead of like, oh my gosh, I have to go say goodbye to Peggy and I gotta go say goodbye to Joanne and, and there's so many things you have to do and then you don't get around to it and you move and you're like, oh, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. So a yard sale kind of kills two birds with one stone. Should, I mean, don't kill any birds with any stones. It's not a good, it wouldn't be good. Your neighbors probably wouldn't like you if you did that. So that's it. Those are my seven tips and hopefully seven things to avoid, um, mistakes not to make. And you know, every little bit helps uh, when you're getting advice for moving across the country. Gosh, just moving down the street, every little bit of advice helps too. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, leave some comments in the comment section below. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And I'm Jen Height with Keller Williams Beach Cities here in El Segundo, California.